Hi, my name is Mew. Thanks Type Weekend for having me. A bit about me. I currently work as a software engineer. I mainly work with web technologies. I graduated from Type at Cooper West Certificate Program in Typeface Design in 2018 and have been making typefaces since. I'll be talking about TypeTuner, a web extension I made recently that allows you to apply a local font onto any web page as well as to configure values for variable font axes. First of all, why am I doing all this? It all started when I was thinking about Wikipedia and how it might benefit from variable fonts. I wanted to experiment and try out the different fonts that I have on my computer as well as my own in-progress fonts. But I really didn't want to modify the source code for Wikipedia just to be able to do this. What I really wanted was to just test out some font files on, on a random website without modif modifying that website's source code. It turns out that this is not so simple. Here's what I would have to do. If the font is already on the page or is installed on my computer, I can try using the web inspector to directly modify the CSS rules for the page's font. If the font isn't already on the page, a few more steps are involved. First, I would have to make sure that the actual font is available on the page. I could do this by hosting the font on an external server and have the web page make a network request for that, or I can try to bundle that with the website assets. Then I'd also set up the font face de declaration in CSS and also the font family. For variable fonts, I would also add font variation settings as well. After all this, I should be able to use the web inspector to play around with the values. This whole process repeats every time a new font is used. As with many software tools, this project was born out of a desire to avoid doing something tedious over and over again. So what's my solution to this? My solution is to create a web extension that does some of this work for me. I drew inspiration from web-based font testing tools out there that just let the user drop a font file into the browser and do most, if not all, of the processing right there in the browser. Most notably, there's Font Gauntlet, which allows the user to visualize variable fonts. What can my font do, which, as the name suggests, tells you what your font can do. And there's Mass Driver Workshop, which consists of two tools. One gives you an overview of your font's metadata, and another creates justified waterfall text set in your font. I wish that I could use a similar tool to test out local fonts on, on a random web page and not on the tools page itself. Web extension is perfect for this since it's a program that can run on any website and can interact with the page content. Before I go on, I would like to note that this is by no means a novel idea. There are other extensions that do similar things and may have more features. I chose to focus on a limited set of essential features and to support variable fonts. With TypeTuner, my aim is to reduce this whole process down to just one. The focus is to be able to use local font files and to apply variable font settings as soon as possible. Most of the coding for this project was done in about a week during a hackathon-like event, so parts of it may be a bit rough around the edges. Here's what I have so far. So here I am on Wikipedia. I'm going to drop Amsavar Roman onto the page. Here I can change the preview text. And I'll only apply the font changes to the paragraph. I can use the slider to change variable font axis values. I can also use the numeric input. Here I can change some of the basic page settings. And I can view the corresponding CSS values from what's shown on the page. And I can refresh to start over. With this, the tool might be useful to web designers in figuring out the right variable font configurations for their projects. 
As I mentioned before, I built this extension in response to my desire to experiment with variable fonts. However, I've also found it useful earlier in my type design workflow for non-variable fonts. I created a simple web tool that can generate script agnostic spacing strings. Here's the tool. Here I'm going to test out a few Thai characters and I'll generate a custom uh, template string instead of using the default NNOO. I'll exclude um, a few characters that I'm not interested in proving right now. And I'll copy this spacing strings into InDesign. Typically, I would look at it in a PDF. Instead, with this extension, I can just look at these spacing strings right here in the browser. I've also found this extension useful when developing fonts where the writing system is a bit more complicated, such, such as Thai. Here I am on Thai Wikipedia, and I'm going to drop my in-progress Thai font here. And here I notice that this mark is off to the left. I'll open up the file in Glyphs and move the anchor to the right a bit. I'll now apply the updated file on, onto a separate tab. And here I can tell that the mark has been fixed and I can compare it with the previous version. So short of writing a script that shows me all the possible combinations of mark placements, this is a relatively quick but not exhaustive way to check mark positioning. So how does all this work? Here are the pieces that are involved in this extension. All the code is written in JavaScript. As shown in the demos, when the extension is activated, a window appears. This is known as the pop-up window. This is basically a Vue.js application running inside the window. This can be in any JavaScript framework or in none at all. I just happen to pick Vue.js since I'm familiar with it and it can make it much easier to manage application states. Another crucial part of the extension is the content script. Once the extension is activated, a piece of code is injected into the web page the user is browsing. This is known as the content script. As we'll see a bit later, the content script allows us to do things like adding a new font or setting the font family on the page. The content script and the pop-up window communicate by passing messages. Messages are basically a piece of command that Boat can understand. The content script listens for messages. The pop-up window sends messages. For example, to change the web page's font, the pop-up window would send a change font message with a font that should be changed to. Upon receiving that message, the content script would actually change the font on the page. This communication channel remains open throughout the entire life cycle of the extension. The limitation here is that only text content can be passed, so a file can't necessarily be passed in a message. To summarize what we have so far, I'll return to our example. So here, once the extension is activated, a pop-up window is open, and a piece of code is also running on top of Wikipedia's code. The pop-up window and the content script remain in communication the entire time the extension is in use. Now we'll see what happens when a font file is dropped into the pop-up window. First, the pop-up window reads the font data using OpenType.js library. Once this is done, the pop-up checks whether the font has any variation axes. If it does, it renders them along with their default values. The window then gets the font family name from the OpenType data. 
and then it shows a preview of the font inside the pop-up window. As I mentioned earlier, only text content can be passed in the messages between the pop-up window and the content script. So the pop-up window can't really pass the font file as is to the content script inside of these messages. Instead, the pop-up uses the file reader API in JavaScript to read the file as a data URL, which is basically a text representation of the file. It then passes that to the content script. The content script then adds the font to the web page. This is done by creating a font face object, loading that, and then adding that to the document. Now the font that was dropped into the pop-up is now available for use on the page. With this implementation, the web page can load the font without the font having to be sent to an external server, so everything stays within your computer. Whenever a value is updated in the pop-up, for example, the value of the optical size axis changes, the pop-up gets the updated value and then sends a message to the content script. The content script then applies the changes to the web page. So this is how TypeTuner works in a nutshell. The extension is currently available on the Chrome Web Store. The biggest limitation of this implementation is that most of the font processing logic is housed in the pop-up window, so the pop-up window needs to stay open the entire time the extension is in use. There's an issue in Firefox where the pop-up window would just close when the file is selected, so the extension unfortunately doesn't work on Firefox. In the future, I might look into adding some kind of persistence to work around with this issue, as well as to be able to restore the user's font configurations after the pop-up is reopened. I'm also looking into making this available on Safari as well. I already have some working code for this. The next step is to clean it up for submission to the App Store. I'm open to feedback and suggestions. Feel free to open an issue on the project's GitHub page. The URL is shown here or feel free to reach out to me directly as well. The links mentioned during this talk, including a link to the extension on the Chrome Web Store can be found at this URL. My email is also listed here. Thank you very much for listening.